This is Falcon, which is a browser made by KDE. And a lot of people ask me, like in live streams, why should I even use Falcon? And let me address that right away. So if you're happy with uh, Firefox Mozilla or even Chromium or Chrome, just stick to it. Don't worry, it's not like you're missing out of some super important browse feature. However, there are some uses ca use cases where you might in be interested in actually using Falcon. And to make an example, I have used Falcon myself for a year or two before switching back to Mozilla. And that was because of a couple of reasons. First, it handled touch input better than Firefox. If you like, I don't know, like zooming in with two fingers, that works better here compared to Firefox. But also it follows your system theme. You can see as an example in the tabs, you've got the blue line, which is made by Breeze. And in general, all of the system dialogue, the context menus, those are styled by the actual queue style which is Breeze, so it will follow whatever theme you make. If you use Quantum as an example, and you want your browser to use Quantum as well, then Falcon is your best choice. So if you're happy with what you have, stick to it. But if you're interested in something that follows your system theme, and that was why I used it, then Falcon is well made for you. And it's a browser, it's I think a simple one compared to the long haul standing Firefox and Chromium, but I mean, it works. So first of all, Falcon 3.2. When I first heard the news, I was like, wait, Falcon is still alive? And well, when you don't know whether a project is still alive or not, you should always check for commits. So this is the GitLab page for Falcon. And here you've got history and just click in that, you will see all of the things that has happened in the past. And you can see that there are some commits, except here. So in this period of time, going from August and before, there's not much happening, but then there's people actually writing tests and then Jonathan Riddell actually packaged the 3.2 version. And likely the new version is the everything that has been done really since the last one, which was something like three years ago. So there is a lot of changes, not because it's so actively developed, as you can actually see if you check this one out and you compare it to Plasma Desktop as an example, it's a much different story. But still three years of work is three years of work. And the change log is pretty long. Let's try to summarize it a bit. It's not very interesting, but it's important. The most important feature is the first one, of course, there's now support for, for screen capture. So if you've got a website, I don't know, Zoom, I guess, if it supports it, you can share your screen, which is absolutely necessary nowadays, I think. You also get an option for an internal PDF human-based viewer if you're seeing a PDF from the internet, so you don't actually have it to open with a third party app. And by the way, Conqu Conqueror, which was a holder of Firefox by KD, was absolutely amazing, amazing at doing this. And then for the cookie manager, you can actually now select more than one cookie at the same time to actually manage them multiple at the same time. I've seen websites uh, sit, citing this feature, like this will help you make uh, things more uh, secure, more private, but uh, no, it's just an user improvement. It's easier to select multiple multiple item, items, okay? And then there's a lot, all of the stuff here of UI refinements. I won't go through them all because they're boring, but it's stuff like, I don't know, where is it? The bookmark manager don't actually allow to create bookmarks without a parent. So you have to select where you're creating the bookmark which is useful because it's a tree-like structure. So you can actually, uh, you know, sort, um, make sure you don't lose any bookmark by putting them in the right categories. And in the preferences, there's now a link in the KD store for installing themes and extension. And again, I understand that you want to cause, like, uh, talk about this feature in like uh, news articles about Falcon, but it's just a new link. It's not that much. The next one is interesting. There is initial support for downloading, downloading themes or extensions. However, remember that given that it's not that highly 
uh, developed the initial support maybe from, I don't know, one year and a half ago and the follow-up maybe never arrived, we can truly know. So it is very good news that we do see a new version of Falcon. Hopefully the next one will be in less than three years. And uh, it doesn't mean that Falcon is super active, but it does mean that there is some work going on and that's important for such a browser. Now, before you jump into the comments saying, okay, but I don't like Falcon because it doesn't support X or doesn't support Y, let me tell you, okay, that's not a point. If you want a full-fledged uh, browser, you gotta go with Firefox or Chromium or Edge, I'm just kidding. So Falcon is not made and can't really be made to fit that use case. Most of KDE developers that I know actually use Firefox in, the, in their daily usage, not because Falcon is bad, but it can't fit that certain kind of use cases. However, there are cases where Falcon is very much needed, just like Anglefish. Anglefish is, is, is uh, in a similar situation. I did a video about Anglefish uh, a while ago, and there's no browser really that works on Linux on a touch device such as a phone, so Anglefish went and tried to fill that gap. It won't be Firefox. Anglefish will never be Firefox, but it's a browser that knows what it's supposed to do and does it, just like Falcon. And that was it. Thanks for following. Falcon is a nice brower, uh, browser, and of course, words are hard to say and pronounce. And uh, thanks also to all of the Patreons that support actually the show. And if you're interested interested in saying, I can do this, uh, Ezra can do this. If you're interested in seeing more content from me, then, uh, well, I've done a lot. I've done a video about why I'm currently using GNOME. You might have noticed that I'm using GNOME and you might, in, you might be interested in knowing why, but I've also done videos like reviewing GNOME before that, before even switching to it, and much more stuff, Linux, uh, the Linux video that, the Linux video that the Linux made, I managed to say it, stuff like that. So if you're interested, go along, subscribe, the bell thingy, see you next time.